you already know about words. You know about uh, phrases. You know, um, you know about clauses and sentences. These are grammatical structures in English. However, there is still another aspect that need that we need to um, that you need to know. There is an aspect of there is a particular structure in English that we refer to as morphemes. Now you know you already know words: boy, girl, shoe, bag, and so on. Now we have elements that actually make up these words because you can find a word such as government or internationally. You can see that it is a word, of course, you, you, you know the word international. But at the same time, you can talk about internationally or international, which tells you that there are elements that make up a word. There are words that are made up of just one element. And then you have words that are made up of uh, more than one um, element. So we talk about morphemes. Now, a morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit of speech, or the smallest meaningful unit, you know, under grammar. Because once we move away from grammar, if you go into um, um, phonology or spoken English, you will be dealing with sounds which are um, smaller than the morpheme. But now we're dealing with the morpheme, which is the smallest meaningful. Um, a morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit of speech. We have two types of morphemes. We have free morphemes and we have bound morphemes. Morphemes could include govern, examples such as govern, boy, shirt. And then we could also have morphemes such as anti, ill, nest, and so on. So we have free morphemes and we have bound morphemes. Now what are free morphemes? Free morphemes are morphemes that can stand on their own. They are morphemes that can stand as words, such as boy, girl, shoe, bag, and so on. They can stand on their own. And we have two types of free morphemes. We have lexical morphemes and we have functional morphemes. Lexical morphemes are morphemes that you can refer to as content words. They include items such as nouns, verbs, adverbs and adjectives. So you can have boy, you can have it, you can have um, far, you can have near, and so on. These are lexical morphemes. They fall under open class words because you can create new words from them. We also have functional morphemes, which are closed class morphemes um, because you cannot add new items um, to them. You have um, they fall under items such as conjunctions, prepositions, articles, and pronouns. So you can have the conjunction and, you have the preposition by, you have the article v, you have the pronoun she. These are all functional morphemes. Now, other bound morphemes, we can we are talk, of course bound morphemes are morphemes that cannot stand on their own. They cannot function as words. They have to be attached to free morphemes. In order to bring, the, in, in order to indicate their meaning. Now we have two types of bound morphemes. We have derivational morphemes and inflectional um, morphemes. Inflectional morphemes are morphemes that indicate the grammatical function of a word. They do not change the grammatical class of that particular word. In, of that particular word. Now in English we have eight um, inflections. We have plurality. Comparativeness, superlativeness, the third person singular verb, present participle verb, past tense, and past um, participle. Now these are um, these items, under these items we have examples such as S, which indicates plur plurality in bags, you have ER in taller, you have EST in tallest, you have ING in singing, and so on. These are inflectional verbs. They have to be attached, inflectional morphemes. They have to be attached to um, um, free morphemes in order to indicate um, their full meaning. At the same time, we also have derivational morphemes. These are morphemes that have to be attached, of course, to free morphemes. On the, uh, on the, um, of course, they are different from inflectional morphemes because they change the grammatical class of the word that they are added um, of the words they are added to. You can have examples such as ly in slowly and e and er in single. Why? Because when you add ly to 
an adjective to the adjective slow, you change it to slowly, which is an adverb. If you add it out to the verb sing, that particular verb will change to a noun in, um, in the word sing. And so you have derivational morphemes, which change um, the grammatical class of the word that they are added to. Of course, in a particular word, you could have up to four morphemes. Definitely, you would have um, a free morpheme, and then you could have uh, more than one bound morpheme. Now, you can have more than one derivational morpheme in a word. On the other hand, you can just have just one inflectional morpheme in a particular word. You can see examples. Of course, the inflectional morpheme always comes um, last in any word. Now, apart from morphemes, we can also focus on word formation processes. These are processes that um, we utilize every day. In fact, because of um, because of the invent um, the the, um, the invention of the computer, we have new words being formed every day in English. And so we have um, word formation processes, which are systematic ways in which words are formed from the scratch or from existing words in any particular um, language. And these processes include borrowing, um, um, borrowing, coinages, um, coining, clipping, blending, compounding, com um, conversion, and back formation. Now we will consider each of these um, processes in English. Now the first one that we're going to focus on is affixation. It's one of the major word formation processes that we have in English. Now affixation is the addition of an affix to a root or a word to form a new word. Now we have um, two types of affixes. You have prefixes and suffixes. Prefixes, of course, are affixes that are added just before um, a root or a word. For example, you have ill in a needle, you have um, un in unjust, you have dis in disconnect. Of course, we have different types of prefixes because, of course, um, prefixes um, have their own um, meanings. And so you get, we have different types such as negative prefixes, reversative prefixes, pejorative prefixes, and prefixes of degree and size. We also have number prefixes such as mono in monocotyledon. We have uni in unilateral. We also have locative prefixes such as inter in international, in intra in interstate. We also have prefixes of time and order such as for, um, ante in antenatal. We have post in postcolonial and so on. We also have prefixes of attitude. We have co in cohabit. We have counter in counteract. Now we also talk about suffixes. Suffixes are those um, uh, affixes that you add at the end of um, a root or a word. Suffixes usually change the grammatical class of um, the words they are added to. We have different types of suffixes. You can have noun suffixes, verb suffixes, adjective suffixes, and adverbial suffixes. And these suffixes are named in that particular way because of the resultant class or the class of the new word that is formed. Now you have noun suffixes such as um, shown in um, education, you have dumb in kingdom, you have hood in childhood. These are affixes that change any particular word to um, a noun. Sometimes the words they are added to are already nouns, and so they will still retain that particular class. On the other hand, you have when you add some of these um, 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 suffixes to some words, they change um, such um, um, words to um, the um, to in um, to nouns. Now we can also um, talk about verb suffixes. Verb suffixes include ify, ise, and ea. For example, you have eyes in philosophize, you have n in um, en in deafen, and so on. You also have adjectival phrases such as N in Nigerian, is, that's your ESE in Chinese. You have full in useful, less in childless. Of course, you know that child is a noun. When you add less to child, you have childless, which is, which is an adjective. You have adverbial suffixes. Of course, the, um, the, the most common one is LY. 
when you add ly to slow to um, um, to slow to quiet, you have adverbs such as slowly, quietly, and so on. You have words in backwards, in forward. You have whiles in wise, in um, likewise. Now let us focus on another word uh, formation process, which is another major word formation process. We have compounding, which is a combination of at least two or, uh, at least two words to form a single um, word. Now you have, we also have different types of, com um, of um, compounds. You can talk about noun compounds, you can talk about verb compounds, you can talk about adjective compounds, depending on the class of the new word that is formed, which means that you can have two words that belong to two different classes, but will we'll change. But once those two words are brought together, they become a particular um, class. You can have noun compounds, for example, taxpayer, headache, girlfriend, softball, and so on. You can also have adjectival phrases, I'm sorry, adjectival um, compounds, such as breath taken, you have law, ab law abiding, bittersweet, head strong. For example, when you have, you have the, the word head, which is a noun, and then you have strong, which is an adjective. When these two are brought together, they become, um, you know, they become um, an adjective, so you have an adjectival um, compound. You can also have verb compounds such as um, hand pick, finger spell, and so on. You also have dry clean. These are verb um, com um, compounds. Of course, when you have um, black list, black is an adjective. List is a verb. When you bring the two together, they form um, a verb. So you can talk about noun compounds, adjective compounds, and verb. Um, compounds. Now let's talk about another um, particular, another um, word formation process which we call blending. Now this is a combination of two or more words in which each of the words loses um, a phonological branch has been taken to form a um, um, branch. So at the end of the day you have branch, you have motel, edutainment, which is a combination of education and entertainment. So instead of making you, instead of turning that word into a compound such as edu, you can't talk, about, it's, um, you cannot say education entertainment. You can simply say edutainment, which means that that particular material is both for education and entertainment. You have your camcorder, which is a combination of your camera and your recorder. You have netiquette, you have netizen, which is a combination of internet and um, etiquette. Now we can also talk about another word formation process, clipping, which we also utilize. Now this is a process in which a part of a word is removed without the loss of its original meaning. We have four types. The first one is for clipping, where the initial part is removed. For example, in the word aeroplane, we simply remove the arrow and use plane. In telephone, we usually refer to the telephone as the phone. We've already removed um, the tele. In university, the uni has been taken away to have uh, versity. And so at the end of the day, you simply say versity, and we know that we're still referring to a university. Now, in backlipping, which is the second one, the final part is removed. And so you call someone a doc instead of a doctor. Of course, uh, we know we're still referring to either a medical um, um, official or uh, a medical consultant or um, a PhD holder. And then you also have your ad in advertisement. The advertisement has been removed to retain ad. And of course, memo is the popular word for memorandum. Now we also have a middle clipping where the middle, middle part is retained. And we simply talk about the fridge instead of the refrigerator. In fact, sometimes I feel people don't even know what a refrigerator um, is. We're still referring to a fridge when we talk about a refrigerator. And then we can talk about um, complex clipping, which is the shortening of a compound word by preserving some part and combining its initial parts to form um, a word. For example, your grandmother, which is a combination of grand and mother. Now, one of the items has been clipped while the other one is retained. In up art, you have optical art. Uh, part of optical has been removed for cablegram. You have cable telegram. The tele has been removed from telegram, and so you have cablegram. Now, in some other 
um, examples you have, a situation in which um, both parts of the, comp the compound um, are clipped. For example, you have sky fi which is usually what um, we say, sky fi you know, for a movie, you say sky fi for science fiction, and the popular one, Forex, uh, for foreign um, exchange. So the two items have been clipped and um, brought together. Now, we can also talk about acronymy. Acronymy is the formation of a word from the initial letters of a string of words. Now, you can have a string of words. In acronymy, you simply pick the first, um, the initial letters of each of those words and uh, bring them together to form a word. Of course, in popular use, we have items such as LAN, that's your local area network, RUN, such as Redeemers University, you have NEPA, you have LASMA, you have PIN. In fact, we have some words that, uh, that people do not know are actually acronyms. For example, laser, which is your light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. We also have scuba and some other items like that. Now, of course, you can see that we've pronounced these acronyms as words. So we take them as word acronyms, LAN, RUN, um, NEPA, LASMA, PIN, and so on. Now, for your letter acronym, these are acronyms in which the letters are pronounced individually. For example, OAU, UN, HIV, ATM, UPS, and so on. They're actually acronyms, but these are the but the acronyms are used instead of um, the full um, words. Now, apart from these other, um, apart from these examples, we also focus on another word formation um, process, which is um, borrowing. This is what we do often in different, of course, when there is, um, um, when there is um, contact between um, two or more languages, sometimes some of um, the speakers borrow words from, um, from one another. And so in the borrowing, for example, in English, English is one language that takes or borrows from other languages. From um, history until today, we still have words that are, um, that are um, borrowed from other languages. For example, from Spanish, you have words such as cockroach, such as fiesta. In Italian, you have, from Italian, you have piano, you have ghetto, you have umbrella, you have this. From Arabic, you have alcohol, you have coffee, you have garbage. From Dutch, you have yacht, yacht you have um, bus, you, uh, bus, you have gallop and so on. From Zek, you have um, ro um, pistol, you have um, polka. From India, you have pyjamas and so on. From Italian, you have traffic, you have bankrupt, you have volcano. From Russian, you have pogrom, you have Soviet. From Australian, you have boomerang, outback and so on. These are words in English that are taken from other um, Languages, even from Nigerian language, um, lang uh, Nigerian languages, you have items such as juju, such as abiku, such as okra, tango, dashiki from Nigerian languages. These are some words that you would even find in some um, dictionaries. Now, talking about coinages, that is another word formation process. Uh, word formation process, of course, from the word coinage, it means that new words are actually coined, they are invented. And so instead of borrowing, you can also invent new words. Now, most of the time, these words are taken from trade names or product names. For example, you have words such as goggle, and even from goggle, you can talk about goggled. Okay? You can talk about goggled, you can talk about kerosene. From product names, you have um, items such as um, pampas, you have teflon, you have um, laundromat and nylon and so on. Of course, these are trade names, but they are not used most of the time, people do not use them as the specific names of those um, products, but as general names for um, those class of um, items. And so, any baby diaper is referred to as pampas. Of course, you know we have different types of diapers. You can talk about huggies, you can talk about um, um, pampas and so on. But most of the time, people just refer to them as pampas instead of referring to them as diapers. We can talk about Kleenex, you can talk about, about Xerox which is a trademark for the copying processes that uses um, zero graphics. So these are coined words such as Milo, such as Bonvita, these are coined, um, coined um, 
words that people make use of in referring to any other type of item than that 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 um, belongs to that same particular uh, to the same um, class. Now um, we can also talk about coinages from people's um, personal names. For example, you have the word um, the word sandwich, which is from a particular um, L in the 17th century, L of sandwich, who loved to um, play games while having his bread with um, some other items, you know, um, within um, that particular, uh, within the, the, the slices of bread. And so from the word, from his name sandwich, we have um, the food item called sandwich. Of course, in the sciences, we have items such as bolt, what, boycott, Fahrenheit, diesel, and so on, which are ta taken from the names of either the people who invented them or the people who um, 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 found um, those particular um, objects. Now we can also talk about conversion, which is a conversion, which is another word formation um, process, which is a process in which a particular word is changed from one part of speech to another part of speech without the use of affixes. So instead of creating entirely new words, one can simply use those words in the form in which they are and use them in use them as a different um, use them under a different class of speech. You have items such as cover, push, cover, push, scream are uh, verbs, but then they they are also used as nouns. For example, um, he pushed me. Push there is a verb, but then you can also have another example. He gave me a push. You can have um, cover the 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 thing, and then you can also have, he gave me the cover. So you simply have the word cover used as a verb, and then also used as a noun. And so we can talk about um, different, um, different types of um, items that can be converted. You can talk about the verbal nouns, the nominal verbs. These are verbs that are taken from nouns. For example, you have man. Man is originally a noun, but it can be used as a verb. For example, you have, he is a man. And then you can also have man the dog. Of course, man there is not um, a male person, but, the, the, um, but there it means um, to guard a particular place. The same thing applies to bottle. Bottle is um, a noun, but then you can also use it as um, a verb. Bottle the, um, those drinks. The same thing applies to pocket, to mask, to cripple, to nurse, and so on. She is a nurse. He nursed him to health. So you can have such examples. And then for nouns, um, you can also have the adjectival nouns. These are nouns that are taken from adjectives. For example, a daily newspaper, you can also you can simply refer to that um, daily newspaper as a daily. So daily, which is originally an adjective, is now taken as a noun. The same thing applies to black or white. He's a black man. Black, of course, is an adjective, but you can also use that particular word as a noun. He is a black. He is a white. You also have the adjectival verbs, verbs that are taken from adjectives. For example, dirty. Don't dirty the room. Don't dirty the, the can. Empty. Empty um, the, the can. Of course, empty um, is an adjective, but it can be used as um, a verb. Now we move on to another word formation process which is called back formation. Now back formation is a type of reduction process in which uh, um, a word of a particular class is reduced to form um, a, a word of another class. Usually it, in, under back formation, the, the original word is of a different class. Now when it is reduced, it changes to a word, of a, of a, a word under a different class. For example, you have edits. Edits, of course, is um, is a, a, a word that is formed from back formation because it's taken from editor. The first word that was created, um, well, that was formed, is the word editor, which has been reduced to edit. Of course, editor, of course, is a noun, while edit is a verb. The same thing applies to swindle from swindler. The first word that was created or formed was um, swindler from swind swindler. You have swindle, opt from option, typewrite um, typewrite from typewriter. Um, orientate from orientation, 
pedal from pedal, and so on. Now, apart from back formation, we can talk about calks. Now, calking is a type of um, borrowing in which um, words are not just borrowed, but they are translated. So we refer to them as word for word or root for root um, translation. So you borrow a word and then translate to items that you have in your own um, words. We have a number of examples in English. For example, on Graciel is translated into scrape sky, which means skyscraper, which is a word taken from French. You have um, Ubermensch from um, um, German, which is translated into Superman. You have commonplace, which is carved from locus communis, and so on. So these are items that are borrowed and then translated. So they, they, um, they are, they are tra you have direct translation of borrowed um, elements from a different um, language. Now we have another word formation process, reduplication, which is a process of forming new words by doubling an entire word uh, or a part of that word. So you can talk about um, total um, reduplication or partial reduplication. Examples include by by of course, which is total reduplication, and then you have higgledy piggledy, which you have uh, which means mixed up or uh, mixed up, and of course, it's partial is a type of partial um, duplication. You have wishy-washy, you have um, tittle, um, tattle. So in um, this particular class, we have focused on different word formation processes. Just as I said, these are processes that you may, you may use in writing. You have a word, you could create new words yourself. Of course, that these words must be words that follow um, um, the English um, rules, the English um, rules that relates to the formation of words. So you can follow any of these rules, affixation, compounding, um, reduplication, um, back formation, conversion, and so on. So of course you know we're dealing with, we're dealing with um, grammatical structure, we're dealing with words, you could create um, new words. In the other class we talked about, um, in um, the other class we talked about direct and indirect speech. You may be giving a, um, a passage in the active um, speech and may be asked to change um, um, that particular passage into the active into the passive construction you should be you should be ready to do that since you have been taught you should be ready to change any active um, um, construction into the passive um, construction in your tutorial classes more exercises will be um, given to you 